Have you ever had someone ask you, and usually it's intended as a trick question, of course, why does a loving God allow sickness and disease? Why doesn't He just heal everyone all the time? What a world that would be. Well, because we all deserve it? (laughs) I think about it. Do they even know what they are saying? Next, you are supposed to pull rainbows out of your rear, of course, and unicorns will exit dancing. It's as much fiction as that in the paradigm that they're set. See, what they're doing, and most do not realize it, let's be honest, they don't. Because this is a programmed line to undermine Yahuwah. is actually they're setting a false paradigm. Because they do not know who Yahuwah is, nor how he operates. And much of the church doesn't really know either. Especially how to defend this kind of thing, which is why they have really no good answer for a lot of these things. And this keeps sticking around as a challenge to the church. And it shouldn't, because it's easy to dispel. This video will do that. Their paradigm fails because it is the failure. The paradigm's wrong from the start, as their thinking is oblivious to how things actually work. They do not understand just how righteous Yahuwah is and how our unrighteousness separates us from His presence. No, not His love, His direct face-to-face presence, which scared Israel at Sinai as they got a taste of just how holy this God is. His presence certainly is healing. But, see... As we learned last week, or a couple of weeks ago, man's days are limited compared to even what we were created to be. The old age of many centuries has now been shortened. Why? Because, my friends, not only our sin, but the weight of the sin of the world weighs on us all, even the righteous. But this was not his intent. Nor will this be the end. See, he didn't create evil. But evil is. And we all have to deal with it. Welcome to Answers in Jubilees, produced by the God Culture. In the days after the flood, Yahuwah cared for man. I know not the story we hear from the occultists, certainly not the movie Noah, which is the Gnostic uh, gospel uh, account, not the Bible one. Only eight souls survived the flood, pure humans, eight. And he made sure they and the animals who would preserve his creation would be given another opportunity. However, we know man's days will become less and less progressively. And that is not a bad thing for now. And it doesn't last in the end as we will have the opportunity to live forever with him. Man has continued to de-evolve ever since, not evolve, and that's according to science. Even DNA shows a de-evolution. So after the flood, something incredible happened. And you won't find this in the modern Bible. Jubilees is this record, and this finally answers a question that stumps the church, especially Noah was given instructions by an angel, and he wrote it down in a book, a book of healing herbs, natural remedies for every disease man would ever face. Say what? That's right. Many who are championing the restorations of healing herbs and natural remedies today over drugs and man-made, lab-made pharmaceuticals, which the Bible calls pharmakia, you know, sorcery, well, they ain't so crazy after all. It's funny how the quack doctors of history are actually those same who are running big pharma today, acting in the same manner as those guys back then. In some cases, even the families even, such as Devil Bill. Oh, you know him as Rockefeller, 
the snake oil salesman father of John D. Rockefeller, a traveling gypsy peddling drugs or sorcery of sort. The alchemist of old carried a similar disdain by many as again <clears throat> what they're practicing was pharmacia, sorcery. Those dark priests are the ones running Big Pharma today and much of government for that matter. And now they call those who believe in healing herbs. Well, they're the quacks now. Boy, talk about evil being painted as good and good as evil. Hmm. Not only does it not make sense, but it makes more sense that Yahuwah would have every remedy in his creation for every disease. But guess what? You will now have an answer for that question we began with. See, if he was saving mankind in the flood, replenishing an earth, being destroyed by evil Nephilim, well, and Jubilees restores that as well as the book of Enoch, and then you start to understand Genesis has said it all along, you can't actually blame him anymore. And you can't call him a murderer, because he is not. He's the Savior. And if after the flood, he then provided mankind with all that we needed in knowledge for healing every ailment, well, how about we stop blaming him because man keeps losing information and operates with negligence. That's not his fault. And in the end, though, we will find out and we'll even cover that today, too, that man will no longer have such limits. Once again, but, see again, we cannot live 900 years right now. The sin of the world and our own right unrighteousness would never allow it. Again, that's not his fault. Time to open your book of Jubilees, and let's remedy this once and for all. Jubilees 10, verse 10. And one of us, one of the angels, that's who's speaking here, he commanded, Yahuwah commanded, that we should teach Noah all their medicines. What's he mean? You will see. For he knew that they would not walk in uprightness nor strive in righteousness. Hmm. Sickness, righteousness. Yeah, think about that. Now, here we have it again, just like a couple of weeks ago. What reason does the angel give for our needing medicines? Well, and he will tell you which kind he means, so don't worry, we'll get there. Because we will not continue to walk in righteousness. So, unrighteousness equals sickness. Ooh, how about that? Now, that doesn't mean that righteousness is the cure for all. Didn't say that, although, perhaps. Noah didn't need medicine. Uh, no record of it. This is the end of his life, you'll see. And he's just now getting this. So he didn't need it for the 950 years of his life. This wasn't for him, but for future generations who were not going to be righteous any longer. And Jubilees will even tell us how far into the future this applies. This book is amazing. And we did according to all his words. All the malignant evil ones. The who? Malignant? Well, it even sounds like a cancer, even. Hmm. Demonic. That's what it's talking about. Demons. Hmm. We bound in the place of condemnation, and a tenth part, one-tenth of them, we left that they might be subject before Satan on earth. Now, we're going to break that down in more detail in a future video, which will be fascinating. And we explained to Noah all the medicines of their diseases. You got that right. All the medicines. Get that. Together with their seductions. Interesting. Whose seductions? Demons. Seducing spirits, as Scripture mentions. You mean there's a remedy for that? Ah, 
it can lead to sickness. That's what's being alluded to here. But we'll get there. How he might heal them with, what, pills, right? Nope, doesn't say that. Read again. How he may vaccinate them against illness. Nope, that's not there either, is it? How he might heal them with herbs of the earth. Herbs. So what is the remedy? The herbs of the earth have every healing power for every disease. Wow. And Noah wrote down all things in a book, as we, the angels, instructed him, concerning every kind of medicine, herbal, that is. Thus the evil spirits were precluded from hurting the sons of Noah. Whoa! Remember Yahusha told the man, Rise and walk, your sins are forgiven you. Who do you think was telling him? Who do you think was oppressing him that he could not be forgiven of his sins? Demons were. See, unlike many horror movies where demons parade as being all-powerful and able to directly harm mankind, they are limited to convincing you to hurt yourself or others to hurt you or you to do something that leads to disease. Sorry to pick on some, but smoking is a perfect example in modern times. The ancient smoking probably didn't cause cancer. However, many get cancer from smoking today, and those cigarettes are actually spiked with pharmacia, sorcery, nicotine, to cause them to be more addictive. Yeah, the cigarette companies got fined for that and all the to-do, but they're still putting nicotine in their cigarettes. Why? Why are they allowed to do so? Because the governments are not looking out for us, folks. Now, that is a demonic action from the big cigarette manufacturers, period. They are not following Yahuwah's advice. They are following the doctrine of demons worried more about their own pocketbook that hopefully you'll smoke another pack or another carton this week so they can increase their profits. Okay, so where is this book? Well, let's see what happened to it. And he gave all that he had written to Shem, his eldest son, for he loved him exceedingly above all his sons. That's because Shem was the holiest of the three sons. See, that's what would matter to Noah the most, the righteous man. Verse 15. And Noah slept with his father, so Noah died physically, and was buried on Mount Lubar, not Ararat, see that? It's not Mount Ararat, it's Mount Lubar in the land of Ararat. Now, same mountain in which the ark landed, not Mount Ararat in Turkey, which is the wrong name in the wrong direction and doesn't fit on many levels. And we cover that in Where Did the Ark Land? But see, Turkey, Armenia, that area, Jubilees identifies as Arara, A-R-R. Not Ararat, which it identifies as H-R-R-T. They are two different words in Hebrew. So they're not discussing the same area. Ararat is actually east of Shinar, where it has to be according to Genesis and Jubilees. And it's in the Himalayas. And we prove that out fully. Don't even try to debate us here. We won't even let you. We'll just meet you. All right, so Shem got the book of healing herbs. He would have passed. I'm just going to follow a little logic here. We don't know what happens to the book after that. There's no mention of it. We don't know what happens. But he would have passed it down to his sons, of course. It would have likely followed his Genesis 10 lineage, all the patriarchs that are mentioned there as it goes, and all the way down to, say, Eber, right? Now, then you have Eber 
who would have most likely given it to Peleg, his elder son, the ancestor of Abraham. But We don't find it in Israel in use. We just don't. It's not there. We don't see it in Scripture. We do see some remedies, but very few. It's just not a large theme of Israel. So why? Well, we strongly believe that this means, and this is our speculation, this is our hypothesis, an educated guess based on all we know, basically, that just as Jacob and Ephraim were the second-born, but righteous, and they received the birthrights, though not customary. We strongly wonder, though we cannot prove, if this book did not continue with Joktan's lineage, Ophir, Sheba, and Havilah, who would have brought it, if so, to the Philippines, the land of Sephar, the Mount of the East, where the Garden of Eden is located. Now, we find even today people in the Orient have a far better handle on herbal medications. That's the topic here. That's the topic of Noah's writing. It's not lab medicines. It's not man-made medicines from that standpoint. Chemically, we're talking about healing herbs. And we wonder if that is not a residual in practice of such teaching. Because we see that in the Orient very prevalently. You see it in the Philippines. You see it even in China. You see it in Japan. And you see people living longer in that area in many cases. So, have we found the book? Nope, haven't. Went and looked at my backyard. Haven't found it there. But we can follow the track of those who practice the remedies of the book. Of using healing herbs instead of Big Pharma. It does make sense, but again, we cannot prove this out fully. Not yet. But fascinating this is. Now, while we're here in Jubilees, we again do not find this book of healing herbs mentioned in the Bible otherwise. However, we do find a couple more passages about healing in Jubilees which really, truly are profound. So let's check those out. Jubilees 2.29, starting in the middle. From the day of the new creation, when the heavens and the earth shall be renewed. Now, that's the day of final judgment. Heaven was not renewed in the flood, so it's not that judgment. It's the final judgment. And all their creation, according to the powers of the heaven, and according to all the creation of the earth, until the sanctuary of Yahuwah shall be made in Jerusalem on Mount Zion. Now, this is really odd, because that's not talking in the context of the days of Moses, is it? That's not the day of final judgment. No, those days came and went, actually, and only lasted a few centuries. It's not Moses' era. This is the last days on the day of final judgment. The new Jerusalem and the original heavenly Mount Zion, which Paul alludes to as well as something different from the one in Israel named after it. Now, we're not going to go there this video. And all the luminaries, angels, be renewed for healing and for peace and for blessing for all the elect of Israel. That's those also grafted into his kingdom as well as lost tribes. It's believers. It is the ecclesia in full. And that thus it may be from that day and unto all the days of the earth. Okay, that's forever from the day of judgment, which fits revelation and much other things on the end times in language and in prophecy, even in the prophets in the Old Testament. Healing will be renewed as the luminary angels will minister healing, peace, and blessing to us who believe. Wow. Let's jump to Jubilees 23, 29, and 30. And all their days they will complete. Okay, again, remember, a couple of weeks ago, we do not complete those days anymore. Not that we were created to live, not the centuries that man was created for, even in those days after Adam sinned. But we live far shorter. 
with a limit of 120 years, essentially. And live in peace and in joy, and there will be no Satan. Yes! No, nor any evil destroyer. No demons. Oh, yeah. Now, we know when this is, okay? This is after the thousand-year reign, okay? Satan is loosed only then to be bound and bound forever, along with any demons that are left with them, such as Gog and Magog. That's when they're mentioned again. And when you see them in Revelation late, that's them coming back after the thousand-year reign. That's what it's saying, time-wise. But we'll get there someday. Now, we will have healing. And in between, we rest or sleep awaiting the final day of judgment. So, what's so bad about that, really, when you think about it? But let's, let's go and continue here. For all their days will be days of blessing and healing. Oh, yeah. And at that time, Yahuwah will heal his servants. Wow, this is his way. See, his way that has been disrupted by a rebellious mankind and even angels. But no, not much longer. It is not going to last. This is a temporary state that we live in. People complain about it, and they say, Oh, how could an angry God, you know, murder people in the flood? Well, he didn't. That's not what that was. Uh, that, you know, God, Yahuwah, was saving mankind, not murdering them. And Moses was not a murderous thug who just had to murder everybody, uh, especially the child that was born in the movie at the end. That's so ridiculous. And they will rise up. And see great peace. And drive out their adversaries. Amen. A taste of the end times here. And here, we're in the book written by Moses, guys. Along with Genesis. Revelation language. The origin of Revelation, largely. As well as the book of Enoch. You'll find several prophecies in both. That tie and fit. And do appear to be the origin. And even those trying to say, oh, but it wasn't written until 150 B.C. Well, that was a copy. That's when they dated the copy. That's not the actual one. But it doesn't matter. It's not even scientifically dated. It's a guess, really. But 150 B.C. is still almost 150 years before Messiah. So it's still prophecy. And Revelation is coming from it 200 years later. So... They looked at this as scripture, you can see, in that sense. So how did they know? Well, the Qumran community is the bridge that brings the Old and New Testament communities together. As they are the same. They're both Old Testament and New Testament. Now, the mindset did not change with the New Covenant. We need to get that at some point. Now, this brings a whole new understanding to so much. As we can now understand, Yahuwah did care enough for us to leave a book of every healing herb we need for every disease. What is sad is no one knows where that went or where it is today. We don't know. It would likely be either with the lost tribes of Israel, through the sons of Eber, or perhaps Eber gave it to his other son, Joktan, Joktan. And we believe that is far more likely because we don't find it in the times of Israel in the Bible in practice. And who knows, perhaps this will be part of the increasing knowledge Daniel predicted soon to be unfolded. Who knows? However, even if we never find it, it speaks volumes as to the value of researching herbal remedies. Yes, even for COVID, as opposed to someone forcing a vaccine that is untested and unproven that may well have greater side effects than COVID for many. We don't know because they're not going to give it enough time to test it, but roll it out before they would ever have done it even a year or two ago. 
even the Hippocratic Oath is broken in such application, becoming the Hippocritic Oath, I guess, as well as many constitutions do not allow a government to force such, but they are anyway. And we live in the era in which we live. This is still mild, though, folks, compared to what is coming. We must prepare. Are we in the end times? Yes. Are we in the tribulation? No, not yet. Much still needs to happen. But many will be forced to take the vaccine, though. And there's a lot of scary language surrounding it from several. And we've heard it as many have. However, relax. If you are forced to take it, In order to travel, especially to return to your home country, for instance, or even to work, which is an unthinkable paradigm, but one in which many of us face now. You need to do what you need to do, and do so with much prayer and fasting if need be. For those worried that the mark of the beast will be concealed somehow within this vaccine, we do not believe not even for a second, just as demons could not touch you directly, just as Satan cannot harm you directly, or he would. He's a powerful angel, but he can't. Yahuwah would protect you in taking the mark of the beast. In other words, if you take it, you are making a conscious decision to take it, whatever it may be. And if, in fact, it is being forced on you, then we do not believe that Yahuwah will allow it to have such effect. May Yahuwah give us wisdom in all things and know that somewhere in Noah's book of healing herbs, there just may well be a counter to whatever this virus may harm, if so. Always remember, Yahuwah is still on the throne. And our time here is very temporary. We live for the long game, for the long haul. We prepare for the day of judgment, that we may be judged as knowing Him, not for perfection, but pursuing a relationship with Yahusha. This is all that matters. Thank you for watching Answers in Jubilees. We hope that, once again, There was something here for you to take away and learn from. We have found this book extremely valuable, and we hope you all will take it seriously as well. Yah bless to all. The Book of Jubilees, the Torah calendar named by the temple priests in Qumran, as the source of the exact determination of how to keep Torah's calendar in the Damascus document. Yes, they called it Torah and used it as such. This book renders the very first map of the world, the most ancient geography in all of history. Jubilee is also known as the Book of Division. As Noah partitions the entire earth to his three sons, finds the Garden of Eden in the Philippines, pinpoints the seat of Gog of Magog's power, demonstrates continental divides originate with Noah and much more. It is the second witness to Genesis and Torah and concurs. It tests as Torah and we encourage you to review this full test for yourself in the beginning of this book. It was the priests who were exiled from the temple who lived in Qumran, known in Bible times as Bethabara, where Messiah was baptized and John the Baptist of temple priestly caste lived and operated. As these were his fellow Levite priests exiled from the temple, who continued to keep scripture there, as well as operate a function, compound, modeled in part after the temple. This is the only historic library of precedence for the Old Testament canon in ancient history, yet explained away in willing ignorance, just as 2 Peter 3 warned. Based on the R.H. Charles translation from the Ethiopic, this book will enlighten and its revelation will rock your world. As all 50 chapters appear in this book with curated and edited margin notes in large print Bible format, easy to read. 
This 288-page quality paperback has a high-resolution section of maps that represent the world's oldest map by Noah. Read it and test it for yourself, and you will likely find, as we have, this book is inspired, even canon, in history. Available free worldwide in ebook or purchase a print copy today on Shopee Philippines or Amazon internationally. Just go to bookofjubilees.org and the links are there for your area. We also offer bundle pricing with our other books in the Philippines. Our books are already expanding now, being read in 52 countries and more than half of the provinces in the Philippines. Join thousands who are finding this useful in their lives.